It's not 7 p.m. Friday, and it's not 95 degrees. But I ain't got no nigga, and no nigga ain't got me. Update. <laughs> it's a new segment that we're inserting into the segment because life happened and niggas is broke and breathes up. Indeed. <laughs> testimonies can definitely attribute to being helpful for other people sometimes we keep our business so to ourselves which is cool but you keep it so to yourself you don't like understand yeah that you might be helping somebody else out that's true. so that's my life update but that doesn't mean we're gonna leave on a negative note we're gonna yeah. unpack this yeah. we're talking about our 20 somethings no relationship you're gonna be in is perfect but especially during your 20 somethings you're going to experience a lot of ebbs and flows and you don't have to take the advice but you might as well listen that's true but i think we should we should definitely dive in a little bit deeper and talk about because one of the things like going through this breakup and understanding like traditional versus modern mm -hmm. breadwinner as a woman and what does that look like and how do you communicate that um understanding what type of relationship you're looking for dating with purpose all those things so, okay, what's your idea on traditional men and women, like how we use that today? Um, I feel like it's a lot in that term because everyone's view of traditional is different. Mm -hmm. So when I think traditional, I'm like, ideally, yes, I wanna be taken care of, provided for. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily saying like a stay at home mom, cause like I'm gonna always get to my own bag. Right. But just being able to like have that man lead the household. Like I do agree with that when it comes to traditional relationships. Um, but I'm not the type of woman where like, I'm just gonna sit back and like not do nothing. I think they get it mixed up. Yeah. Like people get that mixed up when they say they want to be stay at home something. Right. It's like you want to stay at home because you don't want to work. Yeah. Like, you know, like where's my husband at? I'm not trying to work. No, no, no. That's not what we mean yeah, by yeah, no, no, no. Because no. even being a stay at home mom, you're still cultivating like a space and right. creating the environment no, and the peace true. and all those things. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got it confused. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's like, I don't know, people. I think my desire to not be working is to not work for other people Fair. not to just be at home not really doing nothing which i don't think like i think that's the thought that people get when people when women are like you know i don't want to work i don't do this that and third mm -hmm. i've been working since i was 16 mm -hmm. and I, i'm tired already how people work till they 65 i don't know that's a scam like no that's not yeah, gonna work i'm not. tired i'm 10 years in that's and cool. Have kids, feed yourself, take care of yourself, take care of your partner. I barely make sure I eat. I gotta make sure another person eats. Like that's crazy. You, I, I mean, just, but it is. Yeah, and I, I don't have energy to do nothing after work for real. Like I do sometimes, but like some days I don't want to do nothing. And then I'm supposed to like come home and have the energy for children. Like shout out to my mom and moms and people who do it because. My mom went to work and then like she would come home and take care of me and my brother, take us to all the 50 million things we were involved in. And just like, I never knew how much energy that took. Cause right now just taking care of myself is exhausting. Uh -huh. So I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm ready to, I'm not saying like, I would say traditional is attractive to me because I personally don't want to continue having to get up and go to work for someone for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm in a great situation right now. I love my job, love mm -hmm. the people I work with, and I could definitely see myself there long term. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone ever desires to like have their whole livelihood dependent on like a company. Right. Because we're all very easily replaced. Right. And I think the way you were describing like how tired, yeah, all that care and energy makes you yeah. is exactly why partnership it's important it is important yeah. and when you talk about traditional partnership mm -hmm. what that means like what a man leading looks like and yeah. what being a woman and you know adhering to that leadership mm -hmm. looks like i know we're sensitive about the word like 
like submitting mm -hmm. but there's power in being submissive yeah you you know what kills me though what? when women <laughs> talk about wanting a soft life mm -hmm. but don't want to submit I you can't have both it's not a both end like, like I think the two exist I think a soft life comes with submitting if yeah. you have the right partner but you could also have a soft life you know like you can provide yourself with a soft life but I think it's another step to be able to have someone come in your life and be able to like make your life softer or like mm -hmm. add to your soft life so you're at a level of softness that you didn't even know was like capable yeah no you're you're right remember when we recorded this before i had said like advice i would give myself is mm -hmm. to be nicer yeah fuck that no fuck all that i was over here talking about i need to worry about their emotions <laughs> nice breeze is gone i'm still i'm reasonable <laughs> i'm reasonable but i'm just saying like i can't i can't believe i was saying that while putting out so much and not mm -hmm. in return, like getting what was yeah, going fair. to make it an equally yoked situation. Yes. So, no, but you're like talking about like the soft life, the way you're describing it, I'm like, mm -hmm. dang, like we'll say we want a soft life, mm -hmm. but then we'll bring in a person that we just use, right? Yeah, that's true. So to a certain degree, like I have understood that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have dismissed acknowledging another person, so I've put more effort into trying to like acknowledge another person and like mm -hmm. put myself second. Yeah. No, we're not doing that no more. Mm -mm. We're not doing that no more. If you if you a good person, and I'm not talking about like good here and there, I'm talking about like consistently working on yourself, mm -hmm. you should always put yourself first and whoever you welcome into your life should be a compliment, period, point blank. No, for real. Like if you're not making my life easier or softer, why are you here? Because I'm already providing myself a soft life for whatever that looks like for me. But like, if you're not adding to that or helping me in some situation, way or form or whatever, mm -hmm. what you doing here? Stressing me the fuck out. Exactly, especially Stressing if you're making it more out. difficult. Yeah, no, facts. Oh, okay, no. and you know the other question I have written down is what do you bring to the table? I think when we talk about this, it gets real messy. It does. I was watching a video and this girl was like, I bring KPI analysis to the table. <laughs> huh? KPI analysis is what you bring to the table? Well, if that's, if that's what we talk that's about. Like work stuff. She was like, I bring love, kindness, KPI analysis. I was like, oh, so are you a wife or a Oh, you both. Yeah. I mean, no, not to. I just never heard anyone name specifically yeah, no. that they're bringing KPI analysis. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what that is for real. It's basically like if you have a business, uh -huh. you create metrics and goals. Oh, so that's what, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I know what that is, but I've never, never that heard it that way. It. Yeah, I feel like everybody's encountered it. And that's what it. she said she brought to the table? I mean, I think she brought a lot of good things to the table. And somebody out there is probably looking for that, but if somebody mm -hmm. asked me like, what do I bring to the table? You know what's weird? I've never been asked that question. I don't know if that's weird, but like, I feel like people talk about it, but men know when a woman is bringing, is already bringing a lot to the table by the Damn, way she carries herself. That. I just feel like men don't ask that yeah. for real unless they are really questioning it. I should have asked that. I'm yeah. gonna add that to my list of things I should have talked about what do you bring to the table but i feel like you have to phrase a, it yeah i was gonna correctly. say you gotta br do it a little different because like as a man how would you lead your future family yeah or like you know a relationship yeah something, right no something like that. nah fuck it what you bring to the table yeah and if a nigga say he is the table <laughs> our ep <laughs> y'all <laughs> you guys want to say ep you can chime in. At this point, your face is speaking loud. Women say it all the time, and then don't nothing is just supposed to be like it's cool to, for a woman. I'm not saying it's cool for a woman. No, I no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I hear you. But like, in anything, like I've had people say that to me, like, re like, just period, like through you my life. Recently? No, I oh, was okay. not. So first of all. <laughs> <laughs> don't try to don't try to even try to we are addicted to instant gratification mm -hmm. so if you think about dating today yeah. where is everybody gonna hop on instagram yeah they're gonna hop on a place where everything is very surface level mm -hmm. very quick a bunch of likes yeah. swipes dms and all you're doing is engaging with a person's physical mm -hmm. but in order to have a real lasting relationship 
you that that right there is yeah. not going to make it sustainable like that is true. looks the physicality that doesn't last what we are today is not what we will be tomorrow in 15 years from now and we don't even know if the people with bbls are gonna look like in 15 years you know who said it i think it was dream doll she said she doesn't want her bbl anymore i saw that and i'm yeah. like built not bought no, for real. A work in progress. I seen a poster there saying the BBL caskets don't look like guitars or something <gasps> like. But like, there's really no research to like know how that you know stuff makes how it looks as you get older. Like, hey, and I mean when you put it that way, and then you think about the whole issue with you being in a relationship and this like the likes mm -hmm. and how do you engage and do you yeah. portray yourself? And now I'm not gonna cap like when i was done mm -hmm. pictures were gone oh yeah the pictures no i'm not talking about like when it was done like the pictures oh, were oh, gone oh yeah yeah when i was done mm -hmm. i was like nah there's no need for this to be up here because mm -hmm. i don't know where this is headed yeah no, that's very fair. so it's like at the same time there's there's different ways to see it mm -hmm. People do like their privacy. Yeah. Um, but people really be out there like doing doing the ten. No, that's true. I think yeah. it's like being private and being secretive are two different things. Like you can be private about your relationship, which mm -hmm. I think has a lot of benefit in today's age with social media and just like the way that people try to come for you or they'll be negative or haters and just like you don't have to open your whole life up to people like the things that are yeah. most important to me i don't need to share all that people don't need yeah. to know like how i'm every way i'm making my money they don't need to know everything about my family like what mm -hmm. i'm into like you know it's only so much but and they're gonna have a, an opinion regardless yeah so but it don't matter it, yeah so it's like you know but things don't have to be a secret that's i feel like when it's it's a very fine line yeah yeah it's, i think for me knowing what I know now mm -hmm. a red flag is we'll specifically say like at the beginning mm -hmm. and everybody has a different idea of what beginning of the relationship is but mm -hmm. to me it's when I'm consistently spending time with you that's fair if I'm consistently spending time with you and somebody else is also like in their head thinking that you're theirs mm -hmm. or you have that they have some of your time or yeah. access to you yeah that's not cool yeah. But with social media, it's so difficult to communicate those things. And I'm going to say it specifically to men, mm -hmm. because when you do, it comes off as insecure. Mm -hmm. And I never had a problem with social media mm -hmm. until like the last relationship. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize I did have a problem. And I was like, damn, am I insecure? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. It's just it's hard to communicate these things, yeah. you know? But I, I think I'm, you have BBL shorties everywhere. You have access to all types of women. And it can easily turn into a comparison thing. It can turn into a self-worth thing, insecurities. Yeah. And it makes the dynamics of relationships so much more complicated. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know why we're on social media talking about traditional relationships when we don't even have traditional setups. At all. Because traditional relationships weren't thriving with social media to begin with. Yeah. Think about if your parents had social media when they were our age. Think about mm -hmm. if our, my parents, my dad would have been caught up. Think about grandparents who had three families. Like these men back in the they day. They thought they were so slick. You just didn't have social media, sucker. They didn't like, know. Like you talking <laughs> about you gone, <laughs> you going to work or you finna, you taking a road trip or something. You're going to see your other family. Yeah like yeah. oh my god wait that's my life oh sorry wait no 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 that's crazy <laughs> so my dad's side uh -huh. his dad mm -hmm. wasn't in his life and he's from mississippi mm -hmm. but my dad's from inglewood okay so my dad's dad mm -hmm. had two families yeah one in inglewood and one in mississippi yeah. so like this is crazy that's how they was they needed social media back then hey because they'd be like hey come take care of your kids i see your man out here okay he ain't been to see his kids like i know you in mississippi like <laughs> you need to come to inglewood you need to come to inglewood <laughs> or the vice versa you need to come back to mississippi yeah. take care of these babies yes the women didn't even know like women don't even be knowing what's going on back in the day and didn't ask the right question so that's yeah. why we come off as like we're crazy because their moms like our moms weren't asking these questions because yeah. technology no for real 
or they knew and because they were traditional women weren't in positions where they could leave the man now we have education yeah we have money mm -hmm. we have our careers yep. like it's so the the trajectory is crazy yep. so people are asking for things that aren't even really possible to have a, this we're going to experience traditional relationships 2.0 mm -hmm. now the only thing i can say though is if you're gonna date and you want to date with purpose you gonna have to ask a lot of questions and the right questions the right questions and it's not just about asking the questions and getting the answers that's communication it's about understanding how to get the actions to follow those words yeah if the actions aren't there sis you gotta go not for real you gotta go Words only mean so much. Don't don't put no timelines on it either. Because if yeah. they didn't wake up the next day and get to fucking work, literally, you gotta go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> get to work. Yeah, you okay. Job. Get to work. Cause I want you to just work. <laughs> That's not too much to add. Though. I just want you to work. Cause it's like I think we have to also explain that. We're not asking men to come into our lives and take care of everything and do all this and do that in a third. I just need you to meet me where I'm at. Like, cause I'm good and I feel like I've reached a point where with the way society is now and how like women are honestly making, like in a lot of senses, making, earning more than men. Yeah. Now it's still the whole wage disparity, all of that's real. But I'm not sitting here at 26 expecting another man my age to be able to come and like completely take care of everything so i don't have to do nothing now if you can do that that's fine but that's not my expectations no more i just need you to have you so i can have me and then we can be good together and you got enough for you and me i feel that i think i've reached a new new tier new tier mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta make you gotta do more than me that's fair because I, just knowing my personality, yeah. I want someone who's going to drive me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like we I want. Be deep Ellum, man. No, we <laughs> actually need to get out of Deep Ellum. We <laughs> actually Deep Ellum. We need to be at the hotels. <laughs> and we're gonna be at the social clubs. What you mean? Yeah. No. I thought I was in Deep Ellum for the shits and giggles. I wasn't in Deep Ellum looking for my husband. No, no. Speaking with purpose. Yeah. Because I, like. Why is everything else in my life I move with purpose? I shouldn't leave the relationship piece out of it. Yeah. That's what I was doing before. I was kind of like, okay, I'm just gonna meet this person where they're at, try to work with them, try to be supportive. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I'm. What? What I say? Build a bear before I build a man. I said, That's fair. Build a bear is fun, but building a man is not. Yeah. Do Do I look like your mom? EP. Yeah. No, that's a very fair point, but I think you have to be mindful of the baggage that you sign up for. No, that's, that's a fact. Le like, I want your baggage to be, you got too many business problems. Yeah. I want your baggage to be, okay, yeah. no. I want your baggage to not be like the things that the person has lacked taking accountability for, because that's the difference. So, mm -hmm. so when you, everybody comes to a point in their life where they learn how to hold themselves accountable, even if the world is at fault, you are still responsible for your own journey. Some, period some type life. of self-evaluation. Oh, uh, you always have to be in a constant state. Cause I think yeah. about it like with work, I wouldn't be where I'm at unless I owned everything that I did yeah. or didn't do, regardless of how many people may have impacted me positively or negatively, mm -hmm. it's up to me to take it to the next step. So it's yeah. the same thing when you show up in relationships. When you're in relationships, you still have to hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. You still have to, like, you, you can come with that baggage. Yeah. I have abandonment yeah. issues. I come with that baggage, but I work on that. Right. I work on that every day that I can. Sometimes it comes up and I don't know how to deal with it, why, whatever. But I own that. That's never yeah. that person's problem, but they need to be aware yeah, that this is what she's dealing with. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know she's in charge of it. Yeah. Don't come with baggage and expect that, that relationship or that person to fix it. Like It's like having daddy issues, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody has daddy issues, that's not on a man to fix. No. That's not on a man to fix. You need to go talk with your father yeah. or a therapist or go or seek both. God. Do everything, yeah. but that is never going to be another man's 
yeah, position no. to fill, mm -mm. you know? No, so no, when no. I, yeah, but so I'm never not going to support my partner, yeah. but I'm not going to fix what's your responsibility. That's fair. I, I feel like when you think of baggage, it needs to be like at the airport, like the little carousel, like you need baggage. You want to deal with baggage that's going to get off the carousel not the baggage that they just gonna keep carrying it around and it's just gonna and keep going around and around and they ain't making no effort to change it like mm -hmm. you need you need the baggage that you like you got analogy. it and then it's like okay you're gonna take, take your it. baggage and deal with it like you came and got your shit you claim your baggage oh claim instead baggage of, claim. And yeah instead of letting it just keep going around and around in your life and it's just not mm -hmm. it's not changing that's a good one and they talk about like an overweight bag mm -hmm. there's a fee that comes with that yeah if it's you level. cut, okay, shout out to EP. If you come with overweight baggage, you at at the airport, yep. you have to pay a fee. Yep. Sometimes it's thirty dollars. Sometimes it's forty dollars. Yeah. With Southwest, it's seventy five dollars. I'm talking from experience because my bag always, my out. bag is always overweight. And what do I do? I pay that fee. But I own that. Yeah. You know, but I know the fee exists. Right. Don't be so surprised when you find out the fee exists because you came with your baggage. Yeah. Please don't be surprised. The rules were in the they fine are. details. Because like that was communicated. That yeah. was on ooh, that's a good analogy.